There we go. Good fish. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today we are on Table Rock Lake, and that's got that fish on the Mega Bass Mag Draft swim bait. So you can see it's really windy outside, and I thought these fish might be pulling up on some of these shallow bushes. Water temperatures are 60 degrees, and I am excited to get that bite on the swim bait. Hopefully, we'll get a lot more like that. Get some bigger fish as well. It's a nice large mouth right there. Let's get back in the lake and get another one. Oh, there we go. And what I'm throwing here, guys, is a six inch Mega Bass Mag Draft swim bait just around some shallow bushes. And this thing has a hook harness in it, and I'll get into how I'm rigging it here in a little bit. But for now, I get this bait back in the water and try getting our fish. And basically, all I'm doing is fishing some main lake bushes. They're kind of on a channel swing bank that have a lot of wind blowing on it. And usually during the spring, when you have water temperatures around 60 degrees, but you have really strong winds and overcast skies, these fish can get really aggressive. You can catch them on a spinner bait, a swim bait, stuff like that. And and, you know, if it was slick column, I might be throwing like a wackery worm or maybe throwing a shaky head, something like that. But with this cloud cover and the wind, I think that I can cover a lot of water and get some good fish in the boat throwing this mag draft. And so hopefully that's a sign of things to come and we might be getting some good fish on this bait today. Got him. Another one. They are choking this thing right now. That's a good one right there around that mag draft that's what i'm talking about get us off these rocks here that fish was up shallow again it seems like i wasn't getting that many bites back in the pockets on the real shallow banks it seems like you had to get on kind of this like 60 degree or maybe even a 45 degree bank to start getting these fish to eat this thing but they're choking it that's two fish now in about three minutes so hopefully we're onto something we're gonna put more of these big fish in the boat i don't know why i said big fish these are not that big but hopefully we're gonna get some big fish in the boat put it that way Oh, let's see this guy back in the lake. There we go, number two. That's awesome. And really quick, guys, let me show you what I'm doing with this mag draft. Basically, this bait comes with a harness and a treble hook on it. And one thing that I learned from Chris Saldane in one of his videos is that he actually straightens out one of these treble hooks so that he can actually stick it into the bait. And that will keep that bottom two hooks flush to the bait. And he actually takes some pliers and bends these hooks together a little bit closer to kind of make it like a frog hook. And so he'll take some pliers push those together and he says he gets a lot more hookups that way and so I'll take his word for it he knows kind of what he's doing with these swim baits and so worked on those two let's keep it going now some of you may be wondering how I ended up fishing this mag draft swim bait when the fish are just about to start spawning and water temperatures are 60 degrees well basically what I do when I get to the lake is try to go through a process of elimination of what the fish are doing based on the conditions I'm presented with and so right when I got to the lake, I saw that we had some strong winds, 10 to 15 miles an hour in cloud cover. And to me, that always means that there's going to be a group of fish that are actively feeding and they're going to be pulling up in shallow water. And this time of year, there's always going to be bass in all three stages of the spawn. There'll be pre-spawn bass, spawning bass, and post-spawn bass. And most of the time on lakes like Table Rock, the pre-spawn and the post-spawn bass will set up in the exact same type areas. And as long as you can find the areas they're using, you can catch them pretty easily, especially when you get the cloud cover and the wind. And so my goal was to try to find some of these pre-spawn and post-spawn bass during these windy, cloudy conditions to take advantage of that reaction bite. So I started the day on some main lake channel swing banks with bluff rock that the wind was blowing on. And I decided to pick up that mag draft just because I've been hearing a lot about it from other YouTubers and in the media a lot, and I just wanted to give it a shot. And I found that I wasn't getting very many bites on those really steep bluff walls. And so I decided to start working my way back into some of the creeks and pockets. And when I made my way back in the creeks, I kind of lost the wind because these pockets were protected from the strong breeze. And so I realized that I really couldn't get on that reaction bite back in the creeks because there wasn't wind hitting the banks. So by process of elimination, I realized I needed to be somewhat close to the main lake or the first third of a creek where the wind was hitting the banks. And I knew the fish weren't on those steep bluff walls, so they had to be either on a flat bank with wind blowing on it or between the bluff walls and the flat spawning pockets. And so I started in the mouth of a creek by a flat spawning pocket and started throwing that mag draft around and did not get any bites until I got about halfway between the spawning pockets and those bluff walls on these 45 degree transition banks where the rock would transition from the big slate rock and table rock to the pea gravel rock and you would have these chunk rock banks 
with rocks the size of maybe a basketball to a softball. And right away when I got to those banks, I started getting bit. And I got two bites down this bank, and so I decided to try to replicate this around the lake. So I started running around the lake looking for banks that were near the main lake to the first third of a creek with these rock transitions. And I fished two or three banks like this and didn't get any bites, mainly because the wind wasn't strong enough on those banks. But finally, I pulled up on a bank that had wind blowing directly on this bank at a 90 degree angle, just like the first bank I was fishing. It had the rock transition, and we'll see what happens. On the phone with my mom, and I got one. <laughs> They are choking this mag draft. There we go. That's another nice one. These largemouth are just pulled up on these kind of transition banks. I'm kind of figuring out where they're at. You just need some wind blowing and then a little bit of kind of chunk rock mixed with, mixed with some bushes. And they're just up there real shallow. And all nice largemouth. Beautiful fish. Not a big one yet, but I have a feeling if I keep doing this, I'm going to run into a three or four pounder sooner or later. That's an awesome bait right there. I love catching them on a swim bait. Pretty cool stuff. Swim back down there. See, that's the type of thing you can never do in a tournament. You'd hook one while you're on the phone, put your phone away, leave 10 feet of slack in your line and still catch the fish. If that was a tournament, that fish would have spit the bait, it would come back, the hook would have hooked me in the side of the cheek, I'd have to go to the emergency room. That's normally happens in tournaments, but you know, when you're just fun fishing, you can get away with a lot of stuff. So let me explain the retrieve I'm using on this six inch mag draft. And I'm basically just fishing it like I would a 3 8 or half ounce spinner bait. And that's just casting it up to the bank within a foot or two of the shoreline and then reeling it in at a slow to medium pace. And I'm just trying to keep that bait within a foot to two feet of the surface of the water. And I'm not trying to fish this bait deep. The fish that are biting this bait are shallow. They're less than six or seven feet of water. And especially in this clear water, these bass will come out of deeper water to eat this bait, even if they're down there in 10 or 15 feet. And so I'm just trying to cast around any sort of shallow bushes, shallow rocks and cover down these 45 degree banks. And I'm not giving it a very fast retrieve or an erratic retrieve. I'm just kind of slowly rolling it back to the boat. I might twitch my rod a handful of times if I come in contact with a stick or just give it a little bit extra action, which is what I also do when I'm fishing a spinner bait. But really, this bait fishes just like a spinner bait, and I'm using the exact same equipment I would use with a spinner bait. So that would be either a seven foot to a seven foot four medium heavy action bait casting rod. I'm throwing it on a six three to one gear ratio bait casting reel with 15 pound fluorocarbon line. And even though this bait is six inches long, it's not super heavy and so you don't have to have a heavy duty rod to throw this bait on. Like I said, seven foot to seven four medium heavy is perfect. You don't even need a heavy action rod to fish this bait. And you actually don't want a heavy action rod because you're throwing that treble hook and if you have a rod that's too stiff, you can pull that bait right out of the fish's mouth. And so this is a great setup for this bait and it's a very easy technique to do. As long as you have that clear water, you have some wind and cloud cover, just throw it down the bank like you would a spinner bait and you're gonna catch some fish. So after catching that fish, I now had two data points to work off of or two areas where I caught fish using the same pattern. And I was actually able to analyze the areas where I got my bites to determine what they looked like on a contour line map and what the weather conditions were like in those areas. And what I realized is that both areas where I caught my fish were relatively close to a main river channel, but it was right where the main river channel was swinging away from the bank and you were transitioning from those steep bluff walls in the main lake to that 45 degree rocky bank leading into a pocket. And you also had to have wind blowing on these points at basically a 90 degree angle, so straight on those banks. And if you get all those characteristics together, you could catch some fish. And so I actually ran down the lake about two miles looking for another bank that's set up just like this, that looked the same on the contour line map and had that wind blowing in on it. And I found a bank that's set up perfectly. I started casting down it. As you can see, we have lots of wind rock in here. We have the perfect rock and boom, I hook up. Got him. There we go. A little bit better one right there. Nice one. Good fish. We got off this point. Man, these fish are on very specific types of banks and points right now. Every, every time I get around one, I catch one, it's just really hard to find. It has to be a very specific rock with the wind blowing in just like this. When you catch one, it's a really nice one, just like that largemouth all on that mag draft. So I'm talking about. Oh man, that is a fun bite though, guys. Those fish crush that thing when they eat it. 
this wind is picking up which is good in this section of the lake and really i'm just fishing a little secondary point here that has some really nice 45 degree chunk rock with bushes you need to have both those elements to get these fish to bite this bait right now or at least to find an area with fish it's this 45 degree rock right here and you have to have bushes around it if you don't have both those components you're not going to catch one but when you do oh god the one just hit it right there you will get some bites dang and really quick guys, I want to let you know that I just posted six new map breakdowns to my website, fishthemoment.com. This week we broke down Douglas Lake in Tennessee, Lake Fork in Texas, Lake Wiley in South Carolina, Lake Martin in Alabama, Logan Martin Lake in Alabama as well, and Smith Mountain Lake in Virginia. These maps include 60 areas to fish during the springtime across four different areas of the lake and the spots were picked out by Randy Blockett, who is a tour professional with 30 years of tournament fishing experience. And he's fished all these lakes before, and he's giving away a lot of his key spots he's used to perform well in tournaments over the years on these lakes specifically. So definitely check out these map breakdowns if you're interested. And again, it's on fishthemoment.com. So now I've established a pattern and I'm pretty excited. I feel like I can run around the lake looking for all these characteristics, and when they line up, I'm gonna catch fish. The problem is that the wind actually started dying down about 15 minutes after my last fish catch on that mag draft. And when that wind died, the fish were still in the same areas where I was catching them before, but they weren't committing to that swim bait because the wind wasn't there. And so one of the key factors that were getting those fish to eat that swim bait was that five to 15 mile an hour wind. Without the wind, the fish were just slapping at it, and I missed seven or eight fish in a row on two or three more banks. And this is the biggest key I've found to fishing swim baits on southern reservoirs and lakes that are out east, up in the northeast, pretty much everywhere other than California. You need to have wind and cloud cover to get these fish to commit to the bait. And the majority of the time you're fishing when you have no wind, bright bluebird skies and slick calm conditions, the bass are not going to commit to that swim bait. A lot of times you'll see them following the swim bait back to the boat or they may bump the swim bait, but they're not actually gonna eat it and take it into their mouth. And this is going to be really frustrating because a lot of times you'll see really big fish following your swim bait back to the boat when you don't have the ideal conditions. So you need to be fishing the swim baits when you have the cloud cover, when you have the wind, and you also have to know when to switch away from swim baits when those conditions change. It's very tempting to keep that swim bait in your hand all day long after catching two or three fish on it. And if you have those ideal conditions, you can do that. But if you don't have the wind, you don't have the clouds, you're going to have a really hard time getting those fish to eat the bait. And if you're trying to catch as many fish as possible in a fishing day, you're better off putting the swim bait down and only picking it up when you have the wind and when you have the clouds. Now, if you just wanna go out and have fun throwing the swim bait all day, you can do that. You can see a lot of big fish following your bait back to the boat, and that's pretty fun as well. But if you're fishing a tournament or just trying to catch fish in general, definitely make the adjustment, put the swim bait down, and when you get those slick, calm conditions, go to other lures to put fish in the boat. This is all about fishing the moment, fishing the conditions. Now I'm gonna explain how I changed my approach from fishing swim bait in the morning to finding some new fish as the conditions changed. And so with the wind dying, the sun coming out, and you're kind of getting these slick, calm conditions, I decided to switch from the mag draft swim bait to a finesse worm, actually a wacky rig worm. And I started pitching it around the same exact areas, around the shallow bushes and the shallow rocks, and I started to connect with some fish. And this is a really classic technique in the springtime when bass are starting to spawn or just getting ready to spawn. And that's throwing a wacky rig stick worm like a Senko or a striking Ocho and just letting it sink next to bushes and shallow cover down some of these transition banks and in the backs of pockets. And what I realized is that as the day went on, fish started migrating more from these channel swing or rock transition banks to flatter pea gravel banks where you had some wood and some sort of rock cover. And I think it's just because these fish were getting ready to spawn and when the cloud cover and the wind went away, they started to make somewhat of a move further back in the creeks into a different type of bank. And so you have to be very careful when you're on the water to not get too dialed into one pattern and ignore all the other factors that are going on in the lake, like the wind, the cloud cover, the time of day, all these factors are going to change what the fish are doing, the baits need to be throwing, and the areas need to be fishing. And so as the day progressed, I dialed in this wacky worm pattern and was putting a ton of fish in the boat, just casting that wacky rig around next to shallow cover and putting them in the boat. 
And this pattern is super simple. It's not much to talk about. Basically just take that wacky worm, cast it up shallow, let it sink for five to 10 seconds, move your rod a few times, let it sink for five or six seconds, set the hook, put them in the boat, and repeat over and over and over again. And I did find that there were certain pockets that had more fish than others, so you might get like a 20 or 30 yard stretch where you catch four or five fish, then you go 100 yards without catching fish. And it was kind of hard to determine exactly which pockets and creeks were better than others. You just kind of had to cover water until you found those small wads of fish. But either way, it was a great way to end the day catching fish on the wacky worm and I had a blast catching them on the mag draft in the morning. And if I hadn't made the adjustment to switch from that mag draft over to the wacky rig worm, I would have not been as successful and I ended up catching like 30 or 40 fish. So making that adjustment was definitely key to putting a lot more fish in the boat. So hopefully this video was helpful and explain my thought process as I go through a fishing day and shows you how you need to fish the moment and adjust the conditions to keep putting fish in the boat. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below, leave a comment if you have any questions about what I'm talking about, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from Fish the Moment. And I do want to let you guys know that I'm getting married this weekend, and so I won't be posting any videos next week, I won't be doing a live stream, but we will be coming back in the middle of May with more videos and more live streams as well as map breakdowns and everything else going on my websites. So until I see you guys again, best luck on the water, and I'll see you in a few weeks.